let's have an inside look into MakerSuite and see how we can start prototyping with large language models in just minutes. So this is how inside MakerSuite looks like. Let's check out this menu on the left. Here, we can create new prompts. As we can see, there are three different types of prompts that we can create. Text prompts, data prompts, and chat prompts. We also have access to our library, which is the current page that's open right now. If we go to get API key, we can see that here we have the option to create an API key for a new project. And there are also other quick links available. There is a guide for getting you started. There is a prompt gallery that helps you explore different kinds of prompts. There is API documentation and some more information about privacy policy and terms of service. Now let's get back to our library and try different prompts. The first one is text prompt. Let's try it. So here there are interesting things to explore. The first thing to notice are these sample prompts. There are some examples to help us get a better idea of how these prompts could look like. Also, if you pay attention, the text box we can see that there are some examples provided for us. Let's read some of them. Categorize an apple as fruit or vegetable. Write a JavaScript function and explain it to me. Paraphrase, it looks like it's about to rain. And many other more examples. It just shows what kind of prompts you can use as examples of a text prompt. Now let's explore one of the samples that are provided here. Let's check out casual ponderings. So the prompt would be rewrite this into a casual email and then you provide a text for an email. I can click run and now I can see that the language model created a response to my prompt. Let's explore the other kind of prompt, data prompt. So here we can see that there are two different parts. The first one is a table for writing our prompt examples. And the second part is to help us test our prompt. So let's look at an example and see how it would look. Let's try opposites. In the examples, we see that we are providing four different examples of what each of these inputs should receive as an output. So if our prompt is find a word or phrase with opposite meaning, then we can provide examples like if the input is strong, the output should be weak. If the input is thick, the output should be thin, and so on. After providing these examples, we can test our prompt. Now we ask the language model, if the input is wrong, what would be the output? And if the input is fast, what should the output be? And now if we run, we see that in response to wrong, the language model is creating right. And for the input fast, the language model creates slow. We can see that for every input, the language model creates the opposite as the output. Let's explore the third type of prompt, chat prompt. Here, we can also see that there are two parts. There is a part for writing our prompt examples and another part for testing our prompt. So let's look at some of these samples. Let's try chat with an alien. So in the example, we provide some context. Be an alien that lives on one of Jupiter's moons and provide an example conversation. 
if the user says, how's it going? The model should say, I am doing well and so on. If you want to add more examples, we have the option down here. And now we can test our model. So in response, we say, I'd like to visit. What should I do? And the model provides an answer which is relevant and is continuing the conversation. We can keep interacting with the model by writing more prompts. We also have some options for tuning the model below. The first one is a text preview of the same prompt we are working on. Whether it's a table prompt or a chat prompt, we can always have access to the text version of the same prompt. Through the other one, we can fine tune our model. We can choose what kind of model we want to use. We can set the temperature that defines the level of randomness or creativity of the model. And we can also customize the number of outputs the model should produce. There are also some more advanced settings available. For saving your prompts, MakerSuite offers a prompt library feature, acting as a secure storage space for all your prompts, making them easily retrievable for future references. You can also save your prompts on your Google Drive. Sharing your prompt is as simple as clicking the share button. And if you're looking to export your work to a developer environment, just hit the get code button. You can export your prompts in the format that suits you. Python or JavaScript code, JSON objects, or even as a CURL command. Your work in MakerSuite, including the settings, instructions, and test examples are all stored in this code snippet. So in conclusion, the combination of Palm API and MakerSuite offers an incredibly convenient and user-friendly approach to prototyping with large language models. They place the power of generative AI in your hands, providing the flexibility to experiment, tweak, and refine until you've crafted the perfect AI-driven application. If you like this video, please do not forget to like it, so the algorithm helps other AI enthusiasts like you find this video. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel, because more demos on exciting generative AI tools are on the way. See you in the next one.